Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my assistant Chase Hill, one of my very first black belts. He's going to help me out today. And uh, we're going to get super basic right here. And again, uh, I think I mentioned this before, I don't really see things as basic or advanced. Everything is basic and just your understanding of things grow and becomes more advanced. So, that being said, we're going to look at an arm lock from the guard. Um, I've seen a bunch of people do arm locks a bunch of different ways. <clears throat> and I think this is one of the most efficient ways. And there's really two kinds of submissions. There's um, a quick sub and then, you know, a more controlled sub. And all subs have control, but that's a different topic for a different day. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so what I'm going to be discussing today is this arm block right here. So I have him uh, in the arm lock position, obviously. The way that my feet are configured and my legs are configured are very important. We'll discuss that here in a second. But, and also the fact that his, that his head is off the center line right now. If his head was here at this normal center line, then it makes it way easier for him to escape the arm locks and stack and do other stuff, which we'll discuss in some other videos. But <clears throat> Now, I know I've seen a bunch of videos where the guy grabs the arm, pulls it over, and then goes to start arm locking like this. This is never going to work because he's just going to posture up and get out of the arm lock. There's nothing keeping him in it. So I need to keep him in the mix. So first things first, I hip up and I pull his arm over. Ideally, I'd want his elbow to go into my pocket, but there's just nobody's going to let you do that. So you can basically get it to your center. And then I'm going to reach up at the far end of the lever here on his shoulder or armpit. And this keeps him kind of entangled, stops him from posturing up. Now from here, I'm going to go for the quick sub. So I'm not going to climb up and do all that business. I'm going to go straight for the submission. To do this, I need to take my top of my body and put myself in the finishing position. Now I simply unlock my legs and throw them into the winning position. My leg, the bend of my knee, has to be clamped down on the throat. I'm turning my heels away so they're not just clamping down, they're turning. And this makes a, the pressure in the, the control of the arm much tighter. Pull your arm out right there. You can't pull his arm out because of the pressure there. Now if I was just clamping down this way, pull your arm out right there can eventually get it out, right? So I want to make sure that I'm turning, I'm keeping my knees very tight, and my back healing is going to be clamping down very tight. This is trying to touch my knee right here, and my other heel is trying to touch my hip. Now from here, the finish is fairly simple. I always want to hold the top of the arm with my north hand. This prevents him from rolling out when he, if, I, if he did get flipped over, and he's also being control there. There's also ways to hug it too, but for right now, just see clamps are fine. So again, I'm going to control his wrist with a C-clamp grip first. I'm going to go underneath of the other arm, grabbing slightly above the elbow. I'm going to hip up, and as I come back down, I'm pulling his arm across. Like I said, you're not ever probably going to get it into your hip pocket over there, but more than likely you'll get it to your belly button, which is good enough. Now from here, I release his wrist and grab for the end of the appendage right there, into the armpit. I want my longest finger to actually be grabbing into his armpit. Now I'm going to turn my top of my torso into the finishing position, so I'm halfway there. And now I just simply open my legs and jump into the final position. Now what's interesting about this final position, I see a lot of new people kind of mess up, is this back leg. The leg that gets all the glory is the one that goes over their head, so a lot of people leave this back leg kind of back by the hip. If it's back by his hip, it doesn't matter how much I'm uh, back healing my top leg, he'll always be able to rip this arm out because nothing's holding it there. Right? So I need this leg to be all the way up into the armpit, as tight as I can get it. This is very important. Um, now let's, let's kind of discuss the center line issue. Whenever he's sitting here in what's called posture, he has a base and a structure to him that allows him to kind of defend arm locks and stuff. So I need to take him and create something known in Japanese as kazushi, where we're off balancing them a little bit. And so when I start throwing my uh, arm lock, I'm throwing it up and also taking his center line off. I don't want to necessarily knock him over, but I want to have him kind of put into a position where he can't stack me. Stack me up. He's stuck where he can't stack right now. And sometimes they'll fall over or whatever, which is fine. Now we're just in a standard arm lock. And this is really why my north hand should be on top. If we do get rolled to this position and my south hand is on top, he can easily hitchhike or escape. But if I have my grip 
set up where my north hand is on top. For some reason, it keeps him from ever hitchhiking, which is great. I learned that from Pete on Gracie. Little secrets right there. So, let's look at this angle here. C clamp above the elbow, hip up, pull across into the appendage, and I'm gonna jump all the way to the winning position by first turning my top part into the final position and then the legs. Now I can take my hand off of his shoulder, control the wrist, north hand, slide the other hand down to reinforce, and I push my feet to the wall as I raise my hips up for the submission. So, this is a very basic arm lock. It's, called, it's considered a quick sub because we're moving straight to the finishing um, submission right there as opposed to kind of climbing up them. There's a bunch of different ways to do arm locks, obviously, but I think this one has um, some of the coolest techniques in there about, you know, off balancing them, keeping the back feeling pressure, all those kinds of things. Um, even though it's like a simple arm lock, it's something you shouldn't sleep on. You should always be trying to just refine these things for as long as you possibly can, warm up with them or whatever. Um, and if you feel like you're just great at arm locks, do both sides. Because typically people are better at one side than the other. And that's something we need to mirror image. You know, we need to have both sides equal. So anyway, quick sub arm lock from the guard.